everyone. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha, and today is the first day of the Upside Down Readathon. Okay, so technically it's not actually day one. I am getting a little bit of a head start on the readathon. Sorry if the camera's shaky today, I am on the road, but I wanted to go ahead and start my vlog because I have gone ahead and started my first book for the readathon, and I'm going on a little trip today. So if you haven't heard of the Upside Down Readathon, this is a Stranger Things themed readathon that is hosted by a bunch of lovely ladies. And I'm just gonna go ahead and link the information for it down below if you're curious because I don't wanna waste time talking about it right now when I could be telling you about this book that I'm reading. So my first book for the readathon is A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. And this is a horror story and it does not waste any time getting into the horror. I'm reading this for the prompt for the readathon that is to read a book with multiple points of view. And this one I'm about 88 pages into so far and it's really good as far as the writing goes. Um, this is Sean Hamill's debut novel and I feel like it's really good so far. I honestly have no idea where this story is going or if I'm gonna like it, but I definitely love the writing and I could see this being a good one for me. For those of you who don't know what this story is about, I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis because I feel like it does a better job of explaining the book than I do. So it says, Noah Turner sees monsters. His father-in-law saw them and built a shrine to them with the wandering dark, an immersive horror experience that the whole family operates. His practical mother has caught glimpses of terrors but refuses to believe, too focused on keeping the family from falling apart. His brilliant older sister Eunice can't exercise them from her mind no matter how many versions of the story she commits to paper, and his eldest sister, the dramatic and vulnerable Sydney, won't admit to seeing anything but the, be but the beckoning glow of the spotlight until it swallows her up. Noah Turner sees monsters, but unlike his family, Noah chooses to let them in. So, so far in this story, we have got Noah Turner who introduces, kind of introduces himself, and he talks, starts talking about his family. So he says that it's important for you all to know what goes on before he comes into the picture because that plays a part into what happens to his family. So he starts by telling his mother's story and his father's story. Um, so that's where you get the multiple POVs. And that's really all I've gotten to so far. But let me just tell you, like I said, it doesn't waste any time on the horror and the gore and the monsters. It is, I feel like, very inspired by classic horror, or maybe not classic horror, but definitely inspired by horror and H.P. Lovecraft and different authors like that. So if that is up your alley, you might ought to check this book out. So anyways, all right, so that's with the book. But now I'm going to tell you where I'm going today and why I decided to start this vlog early. So it is actually the Friday before the readathon starts, and I have the day off work today. Hubby has the day off work today, and we are going to Nashville because my birthday is later this month. It's on the 20th, and I'm so excited. Um, we were going to take off time then, but it just makes sense to take off today because Monday is Labor Day, and we're off work anyways. So we're going to Nashville today so I can go to McKay's. If you don't know what McKay's is, you are missing out. It is this giant warehouse full of books. It also has like movies and records and games and all that stuff, but we're going for the books. So I'm very excited. I have store credit, so I can buy as much as I want probably because I, I doubt that I will find as many books to buy, even though there's a ton. I doubt that I will find as many to buy as like to equivalent for the store credit that I have. And I also have another box of books that I'm taking today to trade in for store credit. So that's where we're going today. And I thought I would take you along with me for our adventures. So let's just go ahead and go.
I'm back home and we have really bad lighting. So I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess I could shut my windows. I don't know. Um, but I did just want to tell you guys where I went today and what I ended up getting. So I did go to McKay's and I ended up getting 18 books for myself and six books for my middle grade book club kiddos. Some of the 18 books that I got for myself, I may end up giving to those kids. Just depends on like if I like them or not. Oh my goodness, my hair. Y'all are just going to have to ignore what I look like right now because it's been a long day. So, anyways, I got all those books, but 18 of those books, two of the 18 books, I actually got from Parnassus Books. And that is the other bookstore that I filmed a little bit in. And I was so excited to go there. As many times as I've been to Nashville, I would never been to their independent bookstore called Parnassus that everybody raves about. So, I was very excited to go there, and it just made my soul so happy. I had the best experience, and it was incredible. Then I also went to Trader Joe's and I'm going to show you guys what I got at Trader Joe's because I don't have Trader Joe's like super close to me. So like this is a big deal and we were just talking about like teas from Trader Joe's and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get some stuff from Trader Joe's. So y'all are going to deal with this crap lighting while I show you my Trader Joe's stuff. So, um, I think Caitlin from, oh wow, this is really bad. Caitlin, let me just close these. Okay, maybe that's better. Okay, so Caitlin from Pride and Paperback was talking about this mint watermelon tea. I think, I guess this is it. This is the only mint watermelon I saw. So I got this. I'm not a huge fan of black tea, but this just sounded really good and refreshing. So I got that. Then I also heard people talking about this ginger turmeric herbal tea. So I got that. And I'm not sure if I like turmeric or not in my tea. I've tried it before and I've liked some and I've not liked others, but I love ginger. That's always really good for me when I'm sick. Oh, or feeling under the weather. So I decided to get this one. Then I also got this spice chai black tea concentrate to try. Um, so that should be fun too. I love chai and I love like, so I actually love fruity teas and I didn't really get any fruity teas, but that's fine. Well, watermelon is fruity, but I also love chai and I love like the concentrates you can get at Walmart that are like, um, what are they? I don't even remember now. They are, or Oregon Cha and then Tazo, like those. So I love those concentrates you can get, but I wanted to try Trader Joe's. Then I also got, I haven't tried these yet. Um, I should like do a like try this with me. I might do that later, but this is organic pumpkin spice granola bark. And it just looked really good. There's like um, pumpkin spice flavored granola layered with dark chocolate and topped with toasted pumpkin seeds. I was like, that sounds amazing. So I got that. I also just picked up some honey because I could always use honey for my tea anyways. And I wanted Trader Joe's honey just because I wanted it. Then I also got, so I love um, Brookside chocolates and I always get those from Walmart. And this is Trader Joe's dark chocolate covered power berries. And it kind of reminded me of like Brookside chocolate. So it's real fruit juice pieces made with acai, pomegranate, cranberry and blueberry juices and dipped in smooth dark chocolate. So that sounded amazing. And then I got, um, so I have seen Shelby from Grace with Books post about this blueberry lavender almond beverage. Um, it's a creamy non-dairy beverage. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this. Like, what do I add this to? Or do I just drink it by itself? I can't even remember. So if you have suggestions on how to use this, the best way to use it, let me know because it sounds amazing. Okay, and lastly, I got these Coffee Lovers Espresso Beans from Trader Joe's also, and we already broke into these in the car, my husband and I did, and they are so good. They're like 99 cents for this little bag. So, very, very good, highly recommend. So, that is all I got at Trader Joe's, and I'm gonna be a little bit of a meanie and not show you guys the books that I got because I'm going to be doing a birthday book haul later this month, and 
I don't know if I'm going to keep these for that or if I might just do a separate book haul. I'm not sure. It's just going to depend on like how many I end up hauling. But I think I'm going to save some of those and maybe do a big book haul at the end of the month. So that's going to be that for now. But I'm going to go take a nap because I'm very tired and I will catch up with you guys later. upside down readathon. I got up this morning and I made myself a cup of tea, which doesn't really go with the theme of the mug, which is mornings are for coffee and contemplation. This is a quote from Jim Hopper that he said, I believe back in season one. So I've had this mug for a while. I actually got it for my husband and it was from an Etsy shop. So I'm not sure if they still have those or not, but it's worth a look if you're interested. Um, I did dig this mug out of storage just for this purpose. So um, I did have a cup of tea. I wanted to try the ginger turmeric herbal tea that I got from Trader Joe's and I really like that one. And I would recommend it, especially if you're like feeling sick because I feel like it would be a good one since ginger tends to be one of those things that helps you out when you're not feeling well. I also had a couple of Eggo waffles, which if we're being honest, I'm not the hugest fan of. I do like the cinnamon toast Eggo waffles, just eating them by themselves, but I think like regular Belgian waffles are much better. So Eleven and I will have to disagree there. But I just wanted to hop in and say hello and kind of give you an update on my reading because I did start early. So before we get into what I'm currently reading, I did just wanna go ahead and pop up a picture on the screen. This was the photo prompt for day one of the readathon, and it was just to post a picture of your upside down TBR and also your stack of Eggo waffles. So I did take this picture earlier on. It's not from this morning. There's no way I would have gotten all of that done, <laughs> but I did take my pictures in advance and I'm very excited to share them this week. But let's go ahead and get into what I'm currently reading. So you may have seen that I was reading A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill, and I am still making my way through this one. I think I'm going to try to drag this one out a little bit throughout the week because of the order to which I have scheduled my pictures to be posted for the readathon. Um, as an influencer, I guess as a YouTuber, bookstagrammer, whatever, there are some times where I do take pictures in advance and plan things in advance, and the plan was that I'm going to post a picture with this one on Wednesday. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit. I am almost halfway through, and my current thoughts are not many. Um, I will say that I still very much enjoy this author's writing. 
Um, I don't know if I'm going to like the story yet or not. There have been elements of the story that I've really enjoyed, and there have been elements of the story that I have really not enjoyed. And I could see, um, so I'm actually reading this for two reasons. I'm reading this for the Upside Down Readathon to fulfill the prompt of a book with multiple points of view. But I'm also reading this because Jan from Jan Agaton was reading this for her book club and her live show is this coming Saturday. I believe it's the 10th. And I wanted to make sure I had this read so I could tune into that since I haven't really gotten the opportunity to participate before. So I wanted to read it for that. And Jan has been saying how boring she thought this book was. And I'm like, oh no, what am I reading? But I've also learned over time that sometimes when people don't like books, those are the books that I tend to enjoy. So we're just going to hope that I enjoy this one. I'm not really sure how I'm feeling so far. I'm feeling pretty neutral. I think it's a good book. I think right now it would be sitting between a three and a four star, but it's just going to depend on how it goes from here on what I end up rating it. And then the next book that I want to talk to you guys about is Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy. I did go ahead and start this one as well, and I'm almost halfway through it. This is a little bit shorter of a book, and this is about this man and woman who are newly married and it's Sam and Annie and Sam is a psychologist and he is doing his practice like in their home and so Annie finds this vent in the upstairs part of their house where she can listen in on these sessions and everything's going well until one day Sam disappears after one of his sessions and now Annie is trying to figure out what happened to him and so you get like a little bit back and forth. This actually has multiple points of view as well. So you could use this for, or I could use this for that prompt, um, but it bounces back and forth between both of their kind of perspectives or you get, I don't know if it's both of their, I guess it's kind of both of their perspectives. I don't know. The narration bounces back between a male and a female because I'm listening to that on audible as well so i'm listening to that and then also reading physically because i thought it would help me get through the book quicker because sometimes i need that little extra boost of focus so in all honesty the first how many pages the first like 80 pages of this book were just kind of boring to me and i wasn't really sure if i was going to like this book because nothing had really happened and then I found out that this book is broken up into parts. And at the very end of part one, it was like 92, page 92, I think, something happened. And I was like, wait a second, hold on, what? Like, what just happened? So I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll get better from here because I am very curious and confused as to what's going on now. And we like confusion over here on this end of the internet. I love to be confused. I love when things make me think. So hopefully this is gonna be a good one because this is fulfilling my prompt for a psychological thriller, which so far it hasn't been thrilling. But that last part, I mean, maybe it's gonna pick up a little. Um, and hopefully based on that, it's gonna get a little bit more psychological as well. I'm also using it for the um, prompt to read a book with a light on the cover because this is about as like obvious as you can get with a light on the cover. So anyways, those are the two books that I'm reading and the updates that I have. But as for today, I'm just gonna continue reading. There are gonna be live sprints tonight on the host channel, so I'm gonna tune in for those. And we'll just see what I get into from there, but that's the plan for now. I do have some Stranger Things ambiance going on with, I think it's like supposed to be Mike's bedroom. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to continue on with the readathon. So let's just go ahead and get back to reading. Okay, I need a snack break. I've been reading for a little bit and I'm getting a little hungry. So I decided to go ahead and try a couple of the things that I got from Trader Joe's. So I've got the um, pumpkin, organic pumpkin spice granola bark, which just look at the picture, that looks amazing. And then I also got these power berry, dark chocolate covered power berries that I said reminded me of Brookside chocolates. So we're just gonna go ahead um, and I've already opened one of them. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one too. Okay. So we're gonna try the Power Berries because like I said, reminds me of Brookside. Oh, these are like larger than Brookside chocolates. Like this could be my nose, you know? Like, <laughs> look how big that is. I don't know, like I have small hands, so I don't know like the, to compare the size, but these are huge. So we're gonna try this. Jovi is coming over here wanting to try things too now, I guess. Okay. Oh, wow. Hi, baby. That's really good. They're def definitely different than Brookside chocolate. The inside texture is different. Like the inside texture of Brookside is a little bit chewier and this is not, but I don't really know how to describe it, but they're amazing. 
Yeah, I definitely should have got more than one bag of these. Okay, next we're going to try the pumpkin spice granola bark. I'm very excited about this. Ew. I don't know if I want that big of a piece. So, the pieces are kind of big. This is what they look like. So, they've got, like, pieces of, um, like, pumpkin seeds. And it looks like they've got, like, um, what do you call that? Is it? Oh, gosh. I'm making a mess. It's got dark chocolate, rolled oats, pumpkin seeds, maple syrup. Don't lick that, Jovi. Uh, quinoa. That's what I was trying to think of. It, it looks like it's in there. Cinnamon. All kinds of stuff. So, this looks amazing. I don't really want that big of a piece, though. So, this is a little bit smaller. Let's try that. Okay. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm deceased. Are you serious? All right, I got. I should have got twenty bags of those. You need to try these. If you, if you have not been to Trader Joe's and got these, you. This is your PSA. Go now. Okay. Also. I was told that I missed out on getting pumpkin JoJo's from Trader Joe's. And so now I'm just here to say that while I did miss out on those, Walmart has pumpkin spice Oreos. And I've already tried these. I have already opened these, but I'm not going to open them right now because there's tape on them. And I don't feel like getting into that. But I will say I don't have anything to compare them to because I haven't had the JoJo's. But these are so good. Okay, realistically, I'm probably gonna snack more than that. So I am gonna go grab like some chips and dip or something and take a little bit of a break and then come back to reading later. Um, the next time I check in will probably be when I update you on when I've read more. Okay, I'm gonna be late for sprints because I've gotta tell y'all about this stinking book. I don't know what is going on in this book, but I have literally, like people, you can't trust anything in this book. Let me just tell you, I'm on part three and I've been confused three times three times. So, it's going better than I initially thought it was going to, and I'll keep you posted when I finish it because it will probably be tonight. But I just had to tell y'all that this is definitely psychological. And I'm just here to wrap up my thoughts on Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This is the first book that I finished for the Upside Down Readathon, and I'm still just trying to process and figure out what I just read. Um, I've seen so many mixed reviews on this book, and most of those reviews I feel like have not been good. Um, you may not recognize this cover, but typically the cover of this is like black with like a yellow butterfly on it. So I don't know if you guys have seen this book around or not, but it came out a couple of years ago, I believe. And like I said, I haven't really seen a lot of great reviews. Um, it looks like the book, okay, yeah, the book came out in 2020. And I have kind of avoided this book for a while. It was on my list because obviously it has like a psychologist in this book or a therapist. And I really think that's interesting. After reading The Silent Patient, I really enjoy reading books with that in there. And so I wasn't really sure where this book was going to go. But I will say if you decide to pick this book up and try it, you're going to have to trudge through like the first 50 to 90 pages before you get to something good. And I say that with a grain of salt because everybody may not feel the same way, but it's worth it. You have to get through those first 50-ish pages because it's setting you up for something that I can't tell you about. But I will say that the writing did not start off great for me. I did not like what was being said and what was going on. And I was just so confused. And then it kind of started piecing together and the writing got better. Um, like 50, well, I would really say after part one, so the book is broken into three parts. Um, part three is definitely the biggest part, but after part one, I feel like the book got better. So after, so like, this is part two. So it takes about like this much of the book before I was like, wait, hold on a second. Like I'm really interested. And I know that's a lot of the book, but I'm telling you like, stick with it if you can, because as soon as the end of part one happened, I was like, hold up, what? And I said, what? Like a ton of times the book is very twisty and the end left me heartbroken and just uh, I think depending on what you like about certain books okay 
if you liked The Good Sister, The Mother-in-Law, The Last House on Needless Street, um, I don't want to say too much. Like, there's, certain, there's a theme in those books. Um, maybe Sundial. I'm trying to think if there's any other books. There's a theme of something that I, I can't say because I don't want it to spoil anything. Um, in those books that I think if you like that aspect of the story, you might like this one. Um, it's not my favorite book ever, but it just, I don't know. Like sometimes I wonder why I like to read things that break my heart because it's not fun to be heartbroken, but it just like makes you feel for people. And this is one of those books. If y'all know, if you've seen other vlogs where I say like, it just made me feel for somebody like you're going to know, but it just makes me feel for people. And I don't know, like it just, I was so worried at the end, I'll just say, I was so worried at the end of this that it wasn't going to turn out good, um, but I was satisfied with the ending overall. I think there were things that I wish would have happened differently, but then we wouldn't have had, like, I mean, we still would have had a story, but like, I don't know. I just, I think this is a good book. It got thrilling about halfway through and towards the end, especially very much felt like a thriller. I think this is Definitely a psychological thriller and one that I would recommend. I don't know if I'll pick up any more from Amy Malloy or not, but this is a solid four stars. And I'm curious to see if you've read this, what your thoughts might have been on it. Um, and if you decide to pick it up, definitely reach out and let me know your thoughts. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to read some more of A Cosmology of Monsters. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm about halfway through and I am trying to drag this out a couple days. But I'm really looking forward to starting the Saturday Night Ghost Club, which is Lauren's buddy read for Team Steve. I'm so excited. Um, I'm very ready to read that one. I feel like that one's going to tug at my heartstrings too. So apparently this is an emotional reading season for me, which is so funny because Jordan from Sorry Book Solid and Gwen from um, Gwendolyn Kinsinger have just like been talking about emotional book wrecks lately on their channels. And I'm like, I may have to do an emotional book wrecks video because I've been reading a lot of books that have just gripped me emotionally. And I'm not somebody who like enjoys crying a lot. I like to feel emotions and feel moved, but I don't like to cry because it just makes me feel icky. But lately I've been like, not boohoo crying, but like on the verge of tears with some of the books I've been reading. So I may have to do one of those book recommendations videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here. Like I mentioned before, I'm not daily vlogging, but this is gonna go up like after day one, just because I've gotten a lot accomplished. This is a long vlog and I don't wanna extend it any longer. The next vlog will probably be over the next few days because I don't have as much going on, but we'll see. So, if you made it this far along in the video, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and leave a light bulb emoji because that's the book that I finished. So, if you made it this far, please leave a light bulb. If you have nothing else to contribute, just leave that to let me know you support and you watch the video. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm so excited for the rest of this week and the readathon and all the photo prompts and all of the reading sprints and all of the things. So, I will see you guys next time around. I hope you have a great week. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye, friends.